Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show, where we cover everything inside of Burley Stadium with the Greenville Green Devils football team. As always, I'm joined here with head ball coach Eddie Spradlin. We're a little separated yeah, today, here we but go. there's a reason. We got Marathon Quick Stops behind yeah. us. Got to give them all the promo get we can get. Yeah. Shout out to them for sponsoring us and sponsoring your show also. Run in when you run out. Quick Stops. Still owned by Alan Johnson, I oh, think, yeah. correct? I was thinking so. A Greenville legend. I know great drag racer does a lot for this uh, community a lot for this program we appreciate the support absolutely and thank you to them got a little bit of a uh, botlin bernard i think in the corner there too <laughs> so that's the only free promo they get if you want any more than that then you got to pay us to get the word out there but i'm sure you're doing well today it's labor day you just got done with a jv game picked up a 21 to nothing win over elizabethan's jv squad yeah anytime you can beat them and shut them out it makes it even better doesn't matter if it's a jv varsity or any other sport i know greenville always loves wins over betsy and i know you were sleeping a little easier on friday night coming off of the big win over dobbins bennett we'll jump straight into it 35 to nothing i saw the quote from drew armbrister after the game anytime you can shut a team out especially a team like dobbins bennett on television, it's a great way to end the night, and you picked up a 35 to nothing win over Dobbins Bennett. How great did that feel walking off the field that night? Oh, really good. Just the hard work that those kids put in all week, and uh, you know, like you said, Drew, Drew Armbrister really excited about uh, how he played. Uh, you know, played with a lot of excitement. Was on in on a ton of tackles. Uh, led our football team on defense. You know, we had some a couple of guys get banged up in that game that we didn't play that had to go out and didn't get to play much. So. Uh, you know, a lot of guys stepped up, really proud of their effort on Friday. You got to talk about the offense a little bit, too. I mean, whenever you're able to gain 501 total yards, it's something I mentioned. Sometimes it takes teams two or three games to accumulate 500 total yards in the stretch of so many games. You were able to do that in one game against such a great opponent in Dobbins Bennett. 501 total yards, 395 of those being on the ground in the rushing category. The offense was clicking on all cylinders. There's not just really one player that we could talk about. I'm sure we're going to go ahead and talk about three or four of them here in a second. But talk about your offense as a total between the O-line, the receivers, the quarterback, everybody contributed well in producing 500 total yards. Yeah, anytime you can you know, get 500 yards of offense, it's pretty dang special. Then on top of that, you shut somebody out. So uh, really excited, a whole team effort, like you said. We played pretty good on special teams. Uh, still got a little improvement to do there. We got to be able to cover kickoffs a little better. But, you know, super excited about the over, uh, overall team effort. But offensively, putting up 500 yards, uh, not many times we can say you had a, a quarterback rush for 100 and a running back rush for uh, over 100. But, you know, uh, what a great night by uh, Carson Quill and ran the football like a dang man child. I've said that a couple times on a couple different things. But, man, he ran like a man possessed. He's taking uh, six, seven, eight guys to try to get him down. He's breaking tackles. Uh, really, uh, one of the more impressive uh, performances by him uh, since he's been a Green Devil. And you mentioned in our preseason interview, I agreed with you and we felt like he should be a preseason candidate for the Mr. Football Award. Week one, he didn't have the stats to back that up. Week two, he sure made up for it in a big opponent in Dobbins Bennett. He rushed 21 times for 241 yards and a trio of touchdowns. Like you said, it seemed like every time he got the ball, he was possessed, and it seemed like nobody could take him down. And he could just do whatever he wanted the other night. Yeah, and he had about an 80-yard touchdown call back for some bogus uh, uh, holding call by a receiver. But, um, you know, he should have been in over 300 yards of rushing um, against a 6A football team that is a really good opponent. And, you know, hats off to our offensive line. I felt like it, you know, was uh, – a really good effort by them coming off the football. And, you know, one of my coaches, Coach Crawford, was talking to me. This is a, just a, a program win. You know, this is what this program's uh, built off. We won that football because how tough we are, how hard we work in the weight room, how hard we work at practice, and, and how hard we push them in condition. And uh, it just paid off and uh, showed, a, uh, you know, just a great overall team effort. It feels a lot better now that that, that cloud came yeah. back over that sun. It felt yeah. great when we started the yeah. interview, and then the sun comes out. I was yeah. going to mention that, hey, it's feeling a lot better today on Labor Day, and it is. It's a lot cooler today. It's nice weather. You pick up that win over Elizabethan, and we could talk about Dobbins Bennett a little get, uh, the Dobbins Bennett win a little bit. And I want to jump into Caden Ball again. We talked about him last week. We talked about how special he was going to be before the season even started, and he was special the other night also. I read the article that Tate Russell wrote for us whenever he was out here on Friday night. And he wrote about how he, read, or he ran the read option to perfection. He had 10 rushes, 
140 yards and got into the end zone once on his own and also had a passing touchdown to Zayden Anderson. Great game by him. In a lot of situations like that, when it's a young quarterback's second career start and you're going up such a huge opponent like a 6A Dobbins Bennett, there's a little nerves in those situations. Him, seemed like he didn't have any nerves when he came out onto that field Friday. Yeah, you know, he's uh, he got a lot of confidence in him. Uh, but we, we feel really good with him uh, running the, the show back there at quarterback. Uh, but, you know, one thing happened on that uh, – touchdown play is a bad snap kind of he picked it under control made a good ball you know I talked to him when he's running off the field that's what it takes to be a big time quarterback just stay patient let things unfold not getting nervous and just doing what you got to do and he's done a really good job about if it's not there just take it get what you can get let's live to play another down you know we had an interception at the end of the half we just trying to draw something up and get something in there Carson had a big time run uh, and then we got a, a unsportsmanlike penalty got us down there and we just took a, a chance at the end to try to get in the end zone but uh, other than that you know made great decisions and uh, really proud of how hard he's playing right now uh, you know he's uh, like you talked about if you know you run the zone read to perfection you know, everybody's going – when Carson's running like he's running, all right, they're going to start cheating and try to stop him. So that's going to leave something open for the quarterback. And they did a good job. Our offensive staff did a good job uh, calling some different plays uh, just because they, you know, uh, what they were trying to do to stop. And it opened up that quarterback run for us. And uh, we were able to take advantage. And your hats off to, like I said, mentioned before, the offensive line did a really good job blocking. Another the, great week this week by them. The, the receivers are being unselfish out there, doing a great job uh, blocking. You know, the, it's going to pay off for them. We got to get them the football a little more uh, when we get in the region play there. You know, depends on how the game's going. You know, Carson got the heavy hand the other night. Caden got the heavy hand the game before. You know, Carson got uh, some carries that game one, but it was all on the short end of the stick because how we were playing on defense and gave him good field position. Uh, but, you know, I think it's back-to-back three-plus touchdown performance by Carson. Caden's getting in that end zone. Uh, Zane Anderson's getting in there. Uh, really proud of how we're playing on the offense right now. There goes that sun again. Yeah. I need to start wearing a hat. You've got the smart yeah. idea. You yeah. come out here every I'm going to have to get you a Green Devil hat for the show, man. Well, I'll wear it. If you give me one, I'll wear it oh, on yeah. you. But we talk about Caden and how great he has been in the running game. And one connection that I think we're going to see a lot going forward and we've seen a few times this year is the Caden Ball to Zayden Anderson connection in the passing game. You saw it last week, I think, for four receptions and 57 yards. This week he had two receptions, 81 yards, and he got a touchdown on the board for the first time this season. This season, one of those being a long touchdown that went 75 yards into the end zone. He broke a tackle, and again, as Tate wrote, once he breaks a tackle, if he's got open turf in front of him, there's nobody catching that track star. Yeah, man, he can. he's super explosive, such a great kid, works hard all the time, uh, playing two ways for us, playing probably as many snaps as anybody on this football team right now. Um, so uh, really excited about him and what he does for this program. Um, and he, he's got a bright future in front of him for sure. And I want to go over those scoring logs one time before we go into the next question. Carson Quillen, he opened it up with that big 65-yard rushing touchdown. That really set the pace. Zayden had that 75-yard receiving touchdown that I think kind of taught Dobbins Bennett, like, hey, whether you try to control the run game or control the passing game, you're not going to be able to control either. We'll bust a huge play on either side of the ball. Carson, nine-yard rushing touchdown. Uh, one-yard rushing touchdown after the half to make it 28 nothing, and then Caden had that huge 61-yard rushing touchdown for it to be 35 nothing. One big play that we've yet to talk about is that defensive stand going into halftime. How big was that stand? Because when you look at the final box score, you think, well, they might have just scored a touchdown. That's no big deal. But if they score that touchdown, they come out after the half, receive the kickoff, and put any type of points yeah. on the board, whether it's a field goal or another touchdown. If they score another touchdown, boom, just like that, it's a one possession game with the entire second half left to play. Your boys stood strong on that fourth down play, stopped them within the one yard line, forced them into an empty possession that resulted in a goose egg on the board. So how big was that defensive stop? As huge, you know, coming here with, you know, Jack Lister coming in there and making a big time tackle. 
uh, on uh, when you know he's in there for uh, when uh, had a player get injured, but he comes in there and make a big tackle. Somebody else, was, I believe it was Isaac McGill, comes up and hits him and gets him off his feet, and then Jack finishes off to keep him out of the end zone. Uh, but like you said, you know the the game could have changed right there with momentum uh, if they would have got a score right there before the half. But you know we were able to uh, stop him, then we were able to get it down here. Um, you know, if looking back, I might have should try to kick a field goal right there, but uh, just giving our team the opportunity to. to make a big play right there in the end zone. Our, that's what our coaching staff wanted to do, so we took advantage of it. Didn't end our way, but uh, really proud of how uh, we played that first half. And then they come out and played hard in the second half. A lot of times, you know, defensively, you know, anytime you can shut out a 6A opponent like that, uh, uh, you know, 35 to nothing, it, it's pretty special and your guys play pretty dang hard. And we got a lot of guys that were playing a lot of reps too. Uh, you know, some young guys played a lot of reps. We had two, uh, Jack Lister and Hayden Moore, both played really good at linebacker in there, stepping in there uh, so really proud of our overall team effort on Friday night and another great performance by the defense almost pitched back-to-back -back shutouts outside of that one touchdown against Tennessee high they allowed 184 yards against Tennessee high barely allowed even more than that only allowed 204 against Dobbins Bennett to uh, I think your average is 194 throughout the year in those two games so far I mean great job by the defense so far you look at the scoring margin in points allowed and points scored I mean, it's a huge margin right now. You look at how many points you've allowed each game on average and yards you've allowed each game on average. If that keeps going, that defense might be the best unit on the field all year. Yeah, you know, we got to continue to get better at some positions and, you know, continue playing hard. But like I said, hats off to how hard that the whole team was playing. And, and I want to mention again, you know, those dang receivers blocking their tails off, tight ends blocking their butts off out there. Um, you know, they're not getting the ball much, but, you know, they're still out there giving it all. And, you know, we talk about commitment level with our guys. Uh, you can't be selfish in this offense because it's going – it's a big play offense. Not many reps are going to be on offense. And, uh, you know, every, whoever's got the hot hand and how people are starting, we're trying to take advantage. So it might be you're not one night, not the next, but uh, really proud of overall team effort. One more player I want to mention before we go into the break, Sam Gorley. Five of five on extra points. That was somebody that you had mentioned was coming out to play – football for the first time as a kicker and whenever you transition like that great soccer player I've watched him play soccer numerous times but soccer and football a little bit different a little bit different technique but at the end of the day he's still got a cannon of a leg he was five for five on extra points I think that's great for his confidence going forward yeah for sure you know that first game he's super nervous in there and just you know relaxing a little I said just have fun enjoy it man and, uh, you know, he continues to work during uh, practice to get better. Um, like I said, a big-time soccer player, but, you know, he's got a chance to be a big-time football player as well. Um, you know, kicking in the end zone on kickoffs, that really helps our defense out um, and kicking it deep. So, uh, and anytime we can be perfect on PATs, you know, that's one of, our, one of our goals on our goal chart, to be perfect on PAT all the time. And uh, we were able to do that on Friday night, so that's always big. Once again, 35 to nothing win over Dobbins Bennett. On local television, too, that's always great whenever you're featured on local television and not only come out with a win, but when your defense pitches a shutout. Great performance by everybody all the way down through the offense, all the way down through the defense, but you step into region play next. You play Cherokee coming up, so we'll go ahead and get a break in before we preview that game next. So we'll be right back to talk about that here in just a minute on Grassroots Media. For more than 30 years, Tommy's Plumbing has served customers in East Tennessee with licensed and professional plumbing services. From installing your new faucet to replacing your existing piping system, our team at Tommy's Plumbing is trained to handle the job with professionalism, attention to detail, and integrity. By offering warranties on most products installed by our technicians, Tommy's Plumbing stands behind our work, ensuring that your plumbing needs are not only met, but that your problem is solved for the long term. When you need reliable and professional plumbing service, Tommy's is the only call to make. So give us a call today and let us show you the Tommy's difference. At Corner Pond, the friendly and knowledgeable staff has the experience necessary to help you out regardless of the need. Have an item of value you'd like to pawn or sell? Corner Pond can help. They pawn numerous items of value, including Firearms, tools, ammunition, silver, coins, and much more. When you walk through their doors, you'll find well-stocked shelves full of electronics, gaming systems, fishing and hunting equipment, car audio and accessories. And don't forget about the room full of guitars and basses and amplifiers, or their outside lawn and garden equipment. 
Corner Pond is a case knife dealer and carries numerous used knives as well. Stop by and let the friendly staff at Corner Pond help you today at 432 East Bernard Avenue, Greenville, Tennessee. Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show, where we cover everything inside of Burley Stadium with the Greenville Green Devils. As always, I'm joined here with head coach Eddie Spradlin. So you got Cherokee coming up. You're reeling on back-to-back -back wins over Tennessee High and Dobbins Bennett to start the season. Now you enter region play where it means a little bit more. You get Cherokee to open up that region play. You're traveling there to play your first game also going over to Rogersville. So talk about how you're going to prepare for Friday night when you open up region 1-4-A play. You know, like you said, it's, it matters now. Uh, you know, those first two games, you know, we want to win, obviously, but we got to win region games. You can't you can't come out here and stub your toe in a big-time game uh, on the road. So, you know, that's something we've not done. We've got to go. Um, we went down to play in the five-star prep jamboree uh, on the road, but this is our first time going on the road, warm up, do everything like we've been doing. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, but like I said, it's a big time region game that means a lot. Um, need to have a really good week of practice. You know, today you gave them off. Uh, I told them challenges on Friday. Uh, if you can win today and you're not playing JV, you got the weekend off and you got Monday off. Um, enjoy the, the uh, Labor Day and then we'll get back it on Tuesday. So uh, I the, hope they're enjoying the day off today and ready to go tomorrow here at practice. But we got to have a great week of practice. It starts when we get in the weight room tomorrow. Uh, we're going to push it in there, then get out here and get after that practice. And I know when you step into practice tomorrow on Tuesday, you'll be preparing for what you expect to see them run. What are some of the things you're going to work on that you expect them to run on offense? What kind of formations do you think you'll see? You know, a lot of the similar stuff that we've seen with uh, Tennessee High and uh, Dobbins Bennett, where they're playing a lot of stuff with the uh, H back, then trying to spread you out with the uh, you know three and four wide. So um, really. Uh, Similar game plan, so stuff to, in similar plays that they've been running, but a quarterback's going to run a little more for than we've probably seen. Uh, we got to good do a good job staying uh, whatever your assignment is. Make sure you're playing your assignment, not trying to do somebody else's, and just keep on playing like we've been playing. And uh, you know, I want to be better from week to week. We, you know, we I feel like we were better from week one to week two. We got to be better from uh, week two to week three this week. And I know Cherokee's looking to do the same also. We failed to mention that. Cherokee, a 2-0 and team also. Yes. Not a lot of times you see Cherokee start as good as they're starting out this year, but they seem to be a much improved team also. Seems like their defense has been really doing a lot of their work too, holding those teams less points than they're allowing or than they're scoring on offense. So talk about what you expect to see on defense. What do you expect to line up against? You know, they're going to try to play a, a forefront and get up there and crowd the line of scrimmage and try to shut down our uh, run game like you know I think that's most people's game plan so uh, expect to you know we got to take advantage of what they're giving us if they're going or if they're going to try to put some people over the top of us we're going to have to throw some short balls different things to to get the ball to our athletes and let them make plays and uh, just to take advantage of whatever the defensive plan for them is you know our offensive staff's got a great plan in place um, you know we met this morning early before the JV game got our uh, game plan in and uh, ready to go and uh, work that game plan and see what we needed to take in or might put in uh, during practice tomorrow and then just build off that and continue to get better. And as always, going into the game against Cherokee on Friday night to open up region play, what are your three keys to success that you're going to need to carry out? First on, we got to handle, you know, traveling uh, uh, away game uh, on the road. Again, it's going to be an exciting environment. And, you know, Rogersville is going to be an exciting place. A lot of people is going to be at that game. Um, you know, pretty sure it's a one-sided uh, bleacher side, so it'll be uh, nice and loud on one side. Uh, uh, but we're really excited about that. But you got to be able to handle what it takes to go on the road uh, the first game because we've got some three big uh, uh, road games right now back to back. So uh, uh, really looking forward to those. But uh, next thing we've got to be able to control the football. Um, you know, can't be turning the football over in a game like that. Um, region game means the most. You gotta, um, you can't be playing uh, too much emotion. You still gotta play our game, be excited. Uh, but you know, the region games are what we get up for, and we gotta be playing our best football. Uh, so you can't turn the football over in those games. And we gotta continue to be better on special teams. We gotta be able to return. I mean, uh, cover kickoffs. Uh, you know, a lot of people say if you want to be a successful football team, you got to run the football, you got to stop the run, and you got to cover kicks. And we got to be, get better at covering kicks. Uh, hopefully, Sam's putting in the end zone, but when it, it don't go in there, we've got to be able to, to stop those guys. You can't give up big uh, returns on kickoffs. So uh, that's a, you know number 
three uh, keys got to be, you know, covering those kicks for sure. A lot of people just think of offense and defense, but special teams is one-third of a football game. Yeah, for sure. People forget about how important that is, and special teams can change the course of a game. And we've seen it a few times before in football games, so special teams are definitely important. Offense and defense just as important also. They all they all share an equal piece of importance. But you go into Friday night looking to go 3-0, and looking to go 1-0 and in region play. I know 1-0 and is also – what you want to go each week and how you want to enter region play because if you drop one game, then you're going to be clawing from behind the rest of the time throughout the season. Looking forward to those games at the end of the year, seeing if you can fight for that region 1-4A championship. Looking for the, is it fourth straight region championship yeah, be now? Yeah, fourth. You know, this group, this senior class, they don't want to go out not region champs. They've been region champs every year they've been here. So, you know, that's all our goal right now, our ultimate goal it is the big region one four a champs and you know it's it's a tough road to get there especially with the non-conference games you play throw it in there too you know we're going to be beat and banged and, but you got to continue from week to week to continue to improve we're going to be playing our best football by the time we get around to week 11 right there so uh, uh really excited about where this football team is but we got a long way to go still and it starts on friday oh yeah looking to go one and oh with a win i will let Syracuse. it start on uh, tuesday at practice that is true you got to start <laughs> tuesday at practice but Coach, enjoy the rest of Labor Day. That's all I've got for Appreciate you today. It. You do the same. Go Devils. Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate the quick stop. Thank you to them. Thank you to them for sponsoring us. Thank you to them for allowing us to have a sponsor for the show. First week, I was like, welcome to the Eddie Spradlin Show. I was like, man, they're the only one without one. Uh -oh. So shout out to Marathon Quick Stops. Thank you all for sponsoring us. Thank you all for watching this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show. Look forward to seeing you next time here on Grassroots Media. Go Devils. Go Devils.